According to Snyder et al., caffeine differs from adenosine in that caffeine. Now, this seems like a straightforward question, but the references to the answer to, these, uh, to this question is across the first three paragraphs. And considering the complex nature of the uh, complex and technical nature of the language of the passage, with references spread so far apart, that makes this a very tasking question. It's not necessarily difficult, but it does require a lot of uh, searching, a lot of scraping throughout the passage. So let's try and keep our wits about ourselves. Let's keep in mind that the question basically asks us about the difference between caffeine and adenosine. This is according to what Snyder and the others, as mentioned here, Snyder, Dully, and Bruns, they have established. But the question is primarily talking about caffeine. So these first phrases before the commas, as we can see, they relate to caffeine. Then we have adenosine mentioned later in the, in the options. So let's take a look at that. The first option, option A says, stimulates, as in caffeine, stimulates behavior in the mouse and in humans, whereas adenosine stimulates behavior in humans only. Now, caffeine stimulates behavior in mouse and humans. This is a reference from the third paragraph in the brains of mice, as we can see here. This is true. Let's not check that part. The second part is where it goes wrong, where this option goes wrong. Whereas adenosine stimulates behavior in humans only. This is incorrect. If you look at these lines, if you look at the last um, part of this, this particular paragraph. In fact, let's, let's read a little bit ahead. To buttress their case that caffeine acts instead by preventing adenosine binding, Snyder et al. compared the stimulatory effects of a series of caffeine derivatives with their ability to dislodge adenosine from its receptors in the brain of mice. So in fact, we realize that we don't, we don't need to read any further. We see that according to Snyder and the others, the stimulatory effect of caffeine was studied by studying the effect of caffeine derivatives, which had the ability to dislodge adenosine from its receptors in the brain of mice, which means that adenosine does stimulate behavior in the brains of mice. It's not that adenosine stimulates behavior in humans only. The way this happens, caffeine stimulates behavior in mouse and in mice and humans, that is that is mentioned here because we see that the comparison is with humans and the study is basically looking at the brains of mice. But when we see that, when we say that the ability of uh, their ability to dislodge adenosine from its receptors, that means that adenosine does lodge into the receptors. The receptors that we are talking about are mentioned here in the first paragraph. Like many other agents that affect neuron firing, adenosine must first bind to specific receptors on neural, neuronal, uh, neuronal membranes. There are at least two classes of these receptors which have been designated A1 and A2. Now, we see that neuronal membranes or receptors, which are specific receptors to which adenosine binds, that's how adenosine works. It binds to these receptors. In the same case, uh, in the same way, in the case of mice, we see that adenosine also binds to receptors in mice. And caffeine derivatives, they inhibit this binding. They dislodge adenosine from these receptors in the brains of mice. So to say that adenosine stimulates behavior in humans only is incorrect. We can infer from this particular statement in the third paragraph that this part is wrong. It is contradictory to what is mentioned in the passage. So A can be eliminated. Option B says, increases cyclic AMP concentration in target neurons, whereas adenosine decreases such concentrations. Now this is close to true, but we cannot be definitively uh, certain about the effect of adenosine on the concentration of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is mentioned in the second paragraph. It is stated here, for many years, caffeine effect, caffeine's effects 
have been attributed to the in, to its inhibition of the production of phosphodiesterase, an enzyme that breaks down the chemical called cyclic AMP. A number of neurotransmitters exert their effect effects by in first increasing cyclic AMP concentrations in target neurons, therefore prolonged periods at the elevated concentrations as might be brought about by a phosphodiesterase inhibitor could lead to a greater amount of neuron firing and consequently to behavior stimulation. But Snyder at all point out that caffeine concentrations needed to inhibit the production of phosph phosphodiesterase in the brain are much higher than those that produce stimulation. Moreover, other compounds that block phosphodiesterase's activity are not stimulants. So we find that this altogether is talk talking only about caffeine and it also talks about stimulants, whether something is a stimulant or something is not a stimulant. We see that prolonged periods at the elevated concentrations, concentrations of, uh, say, the neurotransmitters, as might be brought about by a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Again, in phosphodiesterase inhibitor, it is still talking about stimulants or maybe caffeine. So, all of this is talking about caffeine. There is no mention of the effect of adenosine on cyclic AMP and its concentration. So this may probably be true, but we cannot be definitive about this. We cannot be certain about this. So these, uh, this may or may not be true. The last phrase of this option may or may not be true. Hence, B can be eliminated. Option C tells us, permits release of neurotransmitters when it is bound to adenosine receptors, whereas adenosine inhibits such release. This is correct. Now we can get most of this directly. One part of it, the one relating to caffeine, must be inferred slightly. So first off, when it is bound to adenosine receptors, we've already seen the, the reference to receptors. It is here. Many other agents that affect neuron firing, adenosine must first bind to specific receptors on neuronal membranes. There are at least two classes of these receptors, which have been designated A1 and A2. So this part is confirmed. Then it is stated here, whereas adenosine inhibits such release, the release of neurotransmitters. This is a direct reference. It is stated here, adenosine normally depresses neuron firing in many areas of the brain. It apparently does this by inhibiting the release of neurotransmitters. So to simplify, adenosine inhibits the release of neurotransmitters. That is also confirmed. So this part is also confirmed. It is stated that caffeine permits release of neurotransmitters. This we have to infer from the last line, the last line of this paragraph, that is. This last line says, Snyder et al. proposed that caffeine, which is structurally similar to adenosine, is able to bind to both types of receptors which prevent adenosine from attaching there and allows the neurons to fire more readily than they otherwise would. So basically this says that by attaching to these receptors, caffeine and its derivatives instead of ad adenosine, they allow the, it allows the neurons to fire more readily than it, they otherwise would. Yes, this talks only about neurons firing, but how do neurons fire, fire or how does that work? We see it here reverting back. Adenosine normally depresses neuron firing in many areas of the brain. It apparently does this by inhibiting the release of neurotransmitters. So we can see that here it is mentioned that caffeine actually causes neurons to fire more readily in which case it must support or it must increase the release, at least permit the release of neurotransmitters. We see that that is true exactly in the case that what, what C mentions here, caffeine permits the release of neurotransmitters, definitely can be inferred to be true. So to simplify, let's clear all of this out and try to understand just this first part, adenosine, inhibits the release of neurotransmitters. Caffeine inhibits the binding of adenosine to receptors, which means that if adenosine doesn't bind to these receptors, then it won't be able to inhibit the release of neurotransmitters, which means indirectly caffeine permits the release of neurotransmitters. That's exactly what C tells us.
So after a lot of effort, we realized that what option C is telling us is exactly true. And that is a point of difference between caffeine and adenosine, exactly what Snyder and the others have postulated. So C is a valid choice. Option D, quite a mouthful. This is a huge option. Thankfully, we don't need to check the entire thing. It says caffeine inhibits both neuron firing and the production of phosphodiesterase. We don't even need to go any further. Caffeine inhibits neuron firing. That is absolutely incorrect. We can see from the, we've already seen the reference. We've seen from the first, first paragraph, the last line, that caffeine allows the neurons to fire more readily. So it doesn't inhibit neuron firing at all. We don't need to check anything else. The very first part, this one, this phrase is absolutely incorrect. It is directly in contradiction to what is mentioned in the passage. So D can be eliminated. Thankfully, we didn't have to check this entire thing. We know D is incorrect. D is eliminated. The correct answer is option C.